Within 48 hours, Luke's antibodies will reproduce enough to synthesize a cure for Jerry. So, you did it? Yeah, I did it. Oh, thank God, this will finally be over. All right. We just have to make sure that nobody finds me until then. Nicholas! It's Luke! We need to talk! Oh my God, Luke's here. Oh, Nick! Luke! Feel free to come into my home whenever you like. Thank you, I just did. Hello, I'm Luke Spencer. Hi. You must be the reason he didn't answer the door. Uh, uh. Yes, yes, this is my friend, <clears throat> Dr. Britt Westbourne. Ah. Your mother is Faison's sidekick, Dr. Obrecht. Pin-up queen for the SS. Whatever she did to you, don't blame me. I didn't ask her to be my mother. Is there something we can do for you, Luke? Yes, actually, there's something you can do for everybody, and it involves her mother. Why? What has she done now? She busted Faison out of prison, and now they're hiding out on Cassadine Island along with Jerry Jacks. Jerry, he's still alive? He's alive, but not well. He's withering away at your family compound along with the doctor who saved my life. That's it? I tell you the League of Evil Doers is running amok on your family theme park and you don't even blink? Sorry, but nothing my mother does surprises me anymore. What about you? I'm aware of the situation and I'm monitoring it. You're monitoring it? Look, Nick. This is not the neighbors getting busy with the drapes open. You don't just watch. These people have to be rounded up. I've got it covered, Luke. Anna and Robert are missing. Jerry Jacks could be holding them prisoner. Have you got that covered? Come on, Nick. We've got to get to Cassadine Island. Now round up your jet and let's get going. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, you don't get to come into my home barking orders telling me how to handle my home in Greece. I tell you that Robert and Anna may be being held hostage by Jerry Jacks, and you say you won't help because of my bad manners? Luke, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so do I. You're sitting on your hands and playing footsie with her while people's lives are at risk. And what I'm doing is telling you quite clearly to stay out of this. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Anna and Robert are my best friends, and if you won't help, I'll go to Wacko Island on my own and get them out of there. Luke, no! I'm sorry, but I... I can't let you do that. Rob. Robin, it's... It's really you. Yeah, it's really me. I'm alive. Should she be doing that? Yeah, it's kind of late now. But how, how is this possible? It's, it's a really long story, but all you need to know right now is that the doctor that Jerry was hiding on Castine Island, that was me. You're the one who saved me. You're welcome. Well, I, 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 how did, how did you? Uh... Jerry was dying and needed a cure. Obrecht was working on it, and then after poisoning my father, she had to go on the run. So Jerry held me hostage on Castine Island, let everyone, including my family, think that I was still dead. I mean, the only good thing that's come out of any of this is the fact that you were cured and not him. You know about this? You knew about this and didn't say anything? Hey, okay, don't blame Nicholas. I'm blaming both of you. Don't tell me you didn't know what your mother was up to. She didn't. It's really cute how the two of you have each other's backs. Look, they're telling the truth. Nicholas went to find Britt's baby. Her son was being held on Castine Island also, and Nicholas found me by accident. Okay, well, if she vouches for you, that's good enough for me. What a relief. I'm so... I mean, this is fantastic. You're alive. Look at you. What do we have to tell Anna and Robert? We have to find them. It's true. You're right. Robert and Anna are on Cassadine Island. But Jerry is holding them prisoner. And we have to leave them there. For now. You really want to leave your parents on that island? No, of course I don't. But right now, we don't have a choice. There's I mean, always I mean, a choice. Robin, there's always a choice. We have to get to them. They have to know you're alive. Look, I don't care what Jerry Jacks promised you. You have to know that he can't be trusted. Well, I trust him when he says that he will kill them if anyone sees me before his cure is finished. Well, the hell with his cure. 
Don't you understand, Robert and Anna, your father, he needs to know that you're alive. He almost killed himself when he thought you were dead. What? My dad wouldn't do that. But he would, and he almost did. Whoever faked your death, they put a body, charred and burned beyond recognition, but they put your wedding ring with the body. And Robert insisted on going to the morgue. What? He saw it, Robin. He thought he was looking at his little girl. He was so wrecked that he went to the bridge above Blackstone Canyon. Hey, Luke, Luke, come on, that's enough. No, hold on. <laughs> what happened? Well, I had to talk him down. In order to do that, I had to lie to him. I had to tell him a, a terrible lie. And what about my mother? She was devastated, Robin. I didn't think she was going to make it. I know that you think you're, you're doing what's best for Robin, but you're really not. Well, what about Anna and Robert? If you go to Cassadine Island, they could be killed. So I'm, I'm asking you, please don't pressure Robin into making a decision that could cause her to lose her parents before she even gets to see them again. Okay, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't just stay here. I have to do something to help them. Luke, you... you're already helping them. So you're telling me you've got my blood percolating at GH in order to make a cure for Jerry Jacks? Yes. And they will be ready within 48 hours. And then and only then can we go back to Cassidy on Island. I'm going to trade the cure for my parents. OK, I've got a better idea. How about we give that cure to Sean Donnelly? and we let Jerry die a slow, agonizing death. Jerry has already warned us. Any sign of a rescue attempt and Robert and Anna will be killed, and we all know that he doesn't give idle threats. And until the cure is ready, nobody else can know that I'm alive. Hello. Hey. Where were you? Did you get lost bringing Luke's labs back? Oh, I just got a little tangled up in something. Yeah? Yeah. Nothing serious, I hope? Nothing I couldn't handle. Staring at Luke's labs all day isn't going to make Jerry's cure brew any faster. Oh. This has nothing to do with Luke. Oh. Yeah. My invitation must have got lost in the mail. <laughs> must have sent my and Brit's invitation by carrier pigeon. <laughs> How'd you come by yours? I swiped it. Ooh, and you used to be such a good little girl. What was I supposed to do, Nicholas? I mean, there was an invitation right there sitting in front of me to my husband's wedding. Well, I hope that its intended recipient isn't missing it. Any idea who it's, who it's for? Yeah, someone named Ellie Trout. Sabrina left it in the lab for her. Hopefully not while you were there. Oh yeah, while I was there, I had to cram myself into this teeny tiny little place underneath the desk. <laughs> she could have seen you. Yeah, well, you know, it's lucky Patrick didn't see me either. What do you mean? Patrick came into the lab while you were hiding? Yes, and from what I can tell, he's still really into the whole PDA thing. Well, at least I know why you've been so snippy all day. Patrick and Sabrina were very sweet to each other. I mean, what couple isn't on the eve of their wedding? Look, I'm really sorry. I know this has been hell for you. <sighs> you got that right. But considering what's at stake here, it's really a good thing that they didn't discover you. Yeah, well, at least they didn't. Uh, Carlos said that Robin is alive? Oh my god, in your voice! Carlos said that Robin is alive? Yes! Can just keep it down? Okay, when and where exactly did Carlos see the late Scorpio Drake? Yesterday, at the hospital in the lab. I guess he was looking for me, and he says that he found Robin instead. Well, how would he even know what she looks like? From a picture that he saw at Patrick's house on one of his many uninvited visits. Honey, Carlos did not see Robin. I mean, in the flesh, anyway. But maybe, just maybe, he saw her in a more supernatural form? Wait. Are you saying that Carlos saw Robin's ghost? Why not? 
Because ghosts aren't real. What if they were? I mean, where would Robin's spirit be hanging out? At the hospital, in the lab where she died. What? What? I, it could happen, and it's a hell of a lot more believable than her coming back from the dead like a zombie. Who is this Carlos? He's Sabrina's ex. And he's still in love with her in that I really don't want her to marry Patrick Drake kind of way. What was he doing in the lab? Someone told him that Sabrina was in there and he found me instead. Well, why didn't you tell me about this last night? Because I was still a little freaked out and it's fine. I mean, Carlos has no idea who I am. You're sure? You're absolutely positive? I don't know. He did mention something about me looking familiar. Oh, Robin, he could have seen pictures of you. Nicholas, it's done. Okay, we can't make him unsee me. So now all we can do is cross our fingers and hope that he doesn't put it all together. I'm in the Carlos situation, but if he does realize who you are, he's not just gonna sit on his hands and do nothing if he's in love with Sabrina the way you say. Oh, he is. But she doesn't want to have anything to do with him because she's in love with my husband, who's apparently in love with her, who are getting married tomorrow. And then once they exchange vows and rings, well, That'll be it. But Robin, the only reason the wedding is still happening is because Patrick doesn't realize you're still alive. But once you, you get the cure for Jerry, we'll trade it in for your parents and you'll be in the clear. You can go to Patrick and tell him everything. Nicholas, it doesn't matter what I tell him. He's still fallen in love with another woman. As much as I'd like to chalk up Carlos's claim to a visit from the spirit world, it makes more sense that he's just lying to me to get at Patrick. I mean, he tried it before with... Patrick's wedding ring, and then he tried it again with that stupid prank phone call that he staged from Robin. Hmm. He's just trying to stop this wedding. He'll have to try harder than that, because the only thing that's going to scuttle these nuptials is the seating arrangement. If Epiphany and I are sitting too close, it's going to be Clash of the Titans. <laughs> Speaking of arrangements, can I escort you to the restaurant so we can check it out? You need to do exactly as I say. When the jury comes back, they're going to gauge the room's mood. They're going to be looking for clues from you as to your guilt or innocence. So you need to just keep it together no matter what's on these tapes. Okay. We're ready, Your Honor. This is it. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, you. I'm not going anywhere. All right, Mr. Baldwin. Press play. With pleasure. Please note, date and time stamp, August 23rd, 2013, the night of the murder. You can clearly see the defendant in the mishap. Uh, objection, Your Honor. It is in no way clear that the man on the screen is my client. Are we supposed to take the DA's word for it? This could be anyone who simply bears a passing resemblance to my client who was just wandering through. Your Honor, the people have a signed affidavit from an expert in facial recognition software who has matched the man on the videotape with the defendant. We also have a statement from the bellhop who picked the defendant out of a lineup who will testify for the prosecution. Overruled. Dave Baldwin, please proceed. Your Honor, that is the defendant on his way to commit an execution. Your Honor, if the district attorney wants to persecute my client, then let him issue a citation for public drunkenness. To classify this as evidence is malicious prosecution. Any conviction influenced by this footage is a gross miscarriage of justice. Your Honor, um, I think the next tape speaks for itself. Not only did the defendant have the opportunity to murder, but he also had the means. I'll allow it. You'll note that the defendant selected the third floor where the Crimson offices are where the victim worked and where Sonny Corinthos would find that victim bleeding to death.
There you have it. The defendant with weapon, motive, opportunity at the scene of the crime. Your Honor, I give you Connie Falconeri's murderer. Oh my God. I really did it. I killed Connie. It seems to me you have two options. You keep quiet and let Sabrina naively trip down the aisle only to have her heart broken. And you spare her that pain. And you tell Patrick that his wife is alive. I just think I already thought of that. Just last night, I was sitting outside his house. I was about to knock on his door. Why didn't you? I couldn't think of a way to tell him they were convincing. Well, that would take some doing. Patrick knows I want Sabrina. He's not gonna believe a word I say. And now it's even more impossible that everybody knows I'm Julian Jerome's right-hand man. No offense. I would take it as a compliment. Yeah. Nothing left to be done. Sabrina's fate is out of my hands and into Robin's. As requested, the defense has seen the footage. Now it is time for the jury to see the footage, to see the defendant wielding the murder weapon, exiting onto the floor where the victim moments later was killed. Miss Miller? That's fine, Your Honor. It is? Did she just say it? Some footage finish. She asked you to work in some kind of an The defense has absolutely no objection to the jury seeing this footage. Good. Bring in the jury. Provided we see the rest of the footage. What are you doing? My job. Thank you very much. Now pipe down, mother. D.A. Baldwin, the rest of the footage, please. The rest of what footage? The footage which shows my client disembarking from the elevator. I mean, that must be even more damning. Certainly it shows my client shooting Connie Falconeri in cold blood. What the hell is she doing? It's okay, it's okay. Is it? Yeah, she's got this. I'd like to see the rest of this footage too, Mr. Baldwin. Do you have any idea where it is? It's gone, Your Honor. Gone where? Well, I'm going to have to refer to Olivia Falconeri's testimony about the flood, that everything after what we saw was either lost or destroyed in that flood. Does the district attorney mean to say that there is no evidence of my client actually entering the Crimson offices? No footage of him killing the deceased? No indication of how he might have exited the hotel? Your Honor, the jury needs to see this footage. This footage, which is incomplete and dangerously prejudicial, while the footage which might exonerate my innocent client has somehow gone missing? I think not, Your Honor. The jury cannot be allowed to see these tapes, and I move that you bar them from this trial. Carlos. I honestly don't know how you survived being separated from Patrick and Emma without going completely crazy. Who says I have it? I do. I think that you are as strong and as grounded as ever. I know it feels like eternity to you, but you're almost there. Your hope's right across the water. Patrick doesn't know it yet, but he's waiting for you. That's just it, Nicholas. He isn't. I mean, Patrick's feelings for Sabrina won't disappear just because I've come back into his life. Patrick loves you. For almost two years, he believed you were dead. Once he sees that you're alive, he's not just going to shrug that off. Yeah, but he's not going to sweep me into his arms either and forget about Sabrina. I mean, my, my family is not going to pick up just where it left off. Patrick is moving on. He didn't, he didn't know, Robin. None of us did. It's just so ironic, isn't it? That Patrick is only doing exactly what I asked him to I do know. in that DVD that I left him. I know, you told him to move on with someone else so he and Emma can build a life together with someone else. You just you thought you were doing the right thing. And now Emma and Patrick, they are happy. They have someone in their life that cares about them and by all accounts is a good person. So well, what, I'm just supposed to waltz in there and, and take all that away from them? I mean, how is it fair of me to demand our old life back when they've worked so hard to build a new one that I'm not a part of? Hey, hey. hey Patrick and Emma still need you. They have Sabrina. They don't need me. I know you're really nervous about seeing Patrick and Emma. You're afraid that you won't 
get the response that you're hoping to. But there's one thing that you that you have to remember here, okay? What? At least I have my health? <laughs> no. You are still the woman that Patrick fell in love with and married. I mean, come on, you have a, you have a little girl together. But Sabrina is the next woman that he's fallen in love with and marrying. <laughs> and Emma already sees Sabrina as her new mommy, so what am I supposed to do with that? You will figure it out. And in the meantime, just focus on getting that cure for Jerry, and in 24 hours or so, all will be over, Jerry will be out of your life, and you'll be back in Patrick and Emma's. Come here. Content of the tapes is intriguing. As evidence, the footage is incomplete and prejudicial. Showing it to the jury would taint the trial and any verdict that results. As such, the defense counsel's motion is sustained and the recordings are barred from the trial. This court is in recess until tomorrow morning. All rise. Congratulations on the nice work, Diane. Yes. The jury is never going to see the tapes? Yeah, but I have. I know, I know. And I know what? I did it. I killed Connie. Second, do you remember killing Connie? No, but what other explanation is there? Don't assume the worst. Until and unless those tapes are found, no one really knows what happened. Nicholas, are you awake? Yeah, come in. Oh, I'm sorry, we can talk no, no, another come time. Come in, please. What's wrong? Uh, besides the fact that I just barged into your bedroom. Uh, I think I invited you in <laughs> twice, actually. What's wrong? Um, I'm worried. About Ben? No, he, he and Spencer are safe out of this house. With my grandmother, they're fine. No, and, and I'm so grateful to you for getting him away from all of this. I mean, of course I miss him, but I know he's better off. That's not what I'm worried about. Okay, then tell me. Maybe I can help. Well, maybe it's nothing, but I still can't find my mother. Ah! You Hulenson! Oh, you're only yourself to blame. You should have known Faison would have turned on you eventually. You should have left him in Steinmar prison. You should have broken him out. That's why we're in this situation. Oh, no. This is not of my doing. Ah, he was rotting in maximum security for a very good reason. He was dangerous to people, including you. You should have left the bastard there to rot. As usual, Labour, you are several steps behind the rest of us. If you want to blame anyone for this fine mess we're in, I suggest you start with Luke Spencer. Yes, I get that. You know, you're in this thing together. You're both in a world of hurt. Just tell her that I love her and to give me a call, will you? Okay, bye. Well, I'll be damned. Come on, tell me how much you miss me. Why are you so sad, Robin? Hmm? If you cooperate, today will be the day you'll be reunited with your family.
Dr. Drake. I was just thinking about you. Good thoughts, I hope. Oh, the best. I was thinking about how in a few hours I'm going to be Mrs. Patrick Drake. Provided you don't stand me up. Oh, don't you worry. Nothing is going to stop me from marrying you today. I'm surprised to be hearing from you so early. Have you recovered from your bachelor party? Me? I'm fine. I was a perfect gentleman. <gasps> I'm sure. Oh, no, I think Felix has sprained his wrist. What? Oh, nothing. It's a false alarm. My person of honor wants me to get ready. He does realize that the wedding's not for a couple hours, right? Get off the phone. It's best not to question him when he gets this way. Okay. Well, I'll leave you to it. Hey, I love you. I love you too. Oh, relax, V. We've still got hours before the wedding, and thanks to you for not letting me go out last night, I am well rested. Well, as dearly as I would have loved to have a drink or six to uh, celebrate your upcoming nuptials, there's no way you're marching down that aisle with bleary eyes or a puffy face. Look, look I'm not complaining. I mean, I was happy to spend my last night as a single person watching classic movies with you. Mm -hmm. Well, leisure time is over. It's my responsibility to make sure you're ready and in the church on time. I've got everything you need. Coffee, Coco Cosmetics, and of course, your new wedding dress. You're welcome. Why don't you just leave me alone? This is a big house full of a lot of people that don't like you. I'm sure you can find someone else to torment. Change your tone, Robin. One call from me to Jerry Jacks and your parents are done for. Except that Jerry is calling the shots, not you. And so far, I have done nothing to break the rules that he set. Well, I'm the one to decide that, <sighs> not you. You can make all the threats that you want, but I know that you would never hurt my mother. I know how you feel about her. You are obsessed with her. Perhaps. But as far as I'm concerned, your father is fair game. Robert Scorpio, come here, you creaky old relic. Hey, come on, takes more than a crackpot doctor with a needle to finish me off, my boy. What are you doing on my doorstep? The last I heard you and Anna were being held hostage by him. You believe everything you hear? If you want to help your parents or yourself for that matter, then behave until the cure is ready. Well, cure or not, my parents will find a way off Cast Nine Island, and when they do, they're coming for you. Listen to me. Don't be such a kid. Grow up. All of my life, I've seen my parents do the impossible. They're a team, and that's why you try to separate them, because you want to manipulate my mother and lure her into loving you. But you know what? That's never going to happen, because my mother despises you. What do you Just because you haven't seen your mother doesn't mean something happened to her. Windermere's huge. You simply could have missed each other. Maybe, but you saw how weird my father got when I asked him about her. When is your father not weird? Okay, yes, he is consistently creepy, but he was even more evasive than he usually is about her. Well, he seems to think that your mother went exploring the underground passageways, of which there are many, so... Yeah, you know. well, I didn't believe him then, and I definitely don't believe him now. It's been too long. I just went to her room, and her bed hadn't been slept in. So, something must have happened to her. What are you talking about, woman? This has nothing to do with Luke Spencer. Besides, he has problems of his own right now. I see Mr. Vane told you that Spencer was suffering from polonium poisoning. The late Helena Cassidyne left him with a parting gift. I always liked her style. Yes, you would. What about Luke? Spencer went in search of a cure. He found one. I thought there was no cure. Mm. Well, there is one now. Luke stole it from Jerry oh. Jacks. Oh, brilliant. What does any of this have to do with Faison? Says I helped develop the cure along with a certain gifted physician. Oh, and I suppose this brilliant doctor just so happened to be you. No, Mr. Lavery. But from what I understand, <sighs> you know her quite well. I do. Who is she? to worry about the dress that I'd have it covered? Well, what do you think? 
It's great. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Definitely an improvement from, from the disasters that I had picked out. Yeah, it is that. Uh, in fact, Brad and I had to drive all the way up to Corinth to pick this baby up. That place gives me the creeps. It's practically a ghost town. Wow, you've just, you've gone above and beyond. And Brad, too. I, I just, I, wow, I can't believe that he's actually, that he's helping out. I mean, this dress, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. But it's not your mother's dress. Felix, aren't you always telling me how you have flawless taste? I mean, you picked out this dress and I'm going to look fabulous. And now that you made sure to duly appreciate my efforts, you can be honest. Tell me what's up, Sabrina. I just thought, I don't know, um... I just thought that if I had my mother's dress, that everything would be perfect. You know, Patrick and I have had so many things get in our way this year, and I thought having her dress would make me feel like I had my mother's blessing. You know, like something would finally go right for us. Come here, Bray. Ugh, I, I can't believe I even care what happens to that woman. I mean, after everything that she's done to me, kidnapping Ben, insisting on calling him little Cesar, everything she's done to Robin and to you. I, I'm fine. We're all getting through this. Uh, what are you talking about? My parents have completely disrupted your life. I mean, you had to send your son away too. Okay, come here. Spencer is safe, okay? Ben is safe, and soon the rest of us will be too. Okay, Jerry will get us cured. We'll all get our lives back no matter what your mother's done. Oh, what my mother's done could fit into a book. That woman has hurt so many people. She deserves what happens to her. But I am still worried. Hey, I, I completely understand that. I mean, you can't choose your parents, right? I know exactly what it, what it feels to have compassion for, well, even love for someone. And deep down, you know you shouldn't. You felt the same way? Absolutely, of course. I told you I was raised by my uncle, who was a very complicated man. Firm believer that the ends justify the means, but he loved me, did the best he could for me. And even in the end of his life, when he gave in to his worst impulses as a Cassidy, and I still couldn't stop loving him. Yeah, but at least you have some fond memories to look back on. I don't think my mother and I have ever shared a warm moment. <laughs> I'm sorry not to brag, but even on your mother's worst day, she doesn't come close to my father. No way. He was a murderer, a, a rapist, amongst other things. He was a danger to everyone around him. But I can't say that I was indifferent when he died. Same with my grandmother. I certainly won't say that I loved her, but she was a, a formidable influence in my life. When Luke finally killed her, she left a void, uh, you know. An emptiness there. What? We're a sorry lot, <laughs> aren't we? Well, here we have each other. Right? Let's get dressed and go find your mother. When was the last time you saw her? Um... In the living room, she was carrying a tray of snacks into the tunnels. All right, well, let's start there. Even though you don't ever want to see her again? It's just like you said. She's your mother. Go on, woman. Tell me, who is this brilliant doctor? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, how typical. Here we are, captive for some maniac used to be the lapdog phone. You want to play mind games. Don't you realize we're wasting valuable time now? We have nothing but time down here. Cesar will never let us go. Well, you can speak for yourself. I want to get out of here. I want to get home. I want to get back to Anna. Mr. Jax, yes. what a delight to see you. Oh, here. God, my day keeps getting better and better. Hey, wait a minute. Tracy didn't shoot him there. Who else got to shoot him? That would be me. Oh, you always did get the fun rides. I don't know why I'm worried about the two of you. I should have known you would get the better of the spud. In all fairness, I didn't put up much of a fight. How could I? You stole the cure. Uh-huh, but you're still breathing. 
I hope that's all you're managing to do. Uh, your health keeps getting better and better. I take it the antidote I paid for worked. You know there's nothing more satisfying than eating someone else's lunch. So you're polonium free, huh? Nary a radioactive isotope in my blood. The cure works, which means my doctor is well on her way to developing another dose. Your doctor? You mean our daughter, the one you've held prisoner for all that time, but not for much longer, methinks. Listen, this may be hard to believe, but we found out that Robin is alive. Anna, I know. I saw her. No matter how much you obsess over my mother, she will never love you back. You're right. My love for your mother will never die, but you, on the other hand, I couldn't possibly care less. You know exactly why you're here. But maybe you have become a little more trouble than you were. Huh? Faison! Hey, there she is. Hi, pumpkin. Hi. Did you guys have fun last night? Uh -huh. Yeah, we did. Auntie Elizabeth, uh -huh. why are you wearing sunglasses inside the house? Um, well, baby, because your Auntie dad Elizabeth has a, a, a headache. Yeah, she's gonna feel better soon, though. Yeah, yeah, real soon. Oh, Lord, what is that noise? <laughs> you downloaded a new ringtone last night. A new what? You got a very good friend. Hello. Ah, oh, best person. This is the person of honor. Uh, calling from the humble apartment I share with the bride-to-be. I need you down here, Stan. We have a code blue. Huh, something blue. You, you saw her? You saw Robin? I told you I wasn't imagining oh, it. Yes, not only did I see her, I spoke to her. Last night at Windermere. Oh my gosh, she's here. She's in Port Charles. Yeah. Has she seen Patrick No, slow yet? down now. Nicholas and Britt, his new squeeze, are the only two that know she's alive. Okay, what, Brit Westbourne? Obrick's daughter? Yeah, the mad doctor and Faison are keeping them on a very short leash, thank to him. Uh, I can't have you to remember I'm still here. Uh, could I uh, trouble you for some refreshments? Oh, shut up, doctor. Jerry. Otherwise, it's going to be drain cleaner up with a twist. Okay, he told Robin that he would kill the two of you if she showed herself before she whipped up a batch of the cure. Well, that's not going to be a problem anymore. No, she can it? tell the world she's alive. He has no more hostages to take. No, Luke. He has one. Anna, Anna, Anna! That's all I ever hear. If I have to listen to one more man fawning over that bean pole, I'm going to show you what scary really oh, is. Well, can we just stick to the point and try to get out of here? We have our lives to go back to. Well, I would imagine yours would be a little bit more duplicitous than mine. A brilliant idea. Let's get out of here. After you. Hmm? Great. What? Well, I've almost got one of my hands free. Are you able to free yourself? No. Are you trying to drive me mad? Too late for that. But what I can do, probably, is... I can't loosen my own knot, but I can probably loosen yours, then you, in turn, can loosen mine. And what's to stop me from leaving you behind once I free myself? Oh, you stupid woman, don't you understand? The only chance we have is if we work together. Together? You despise me. I do, but that's beside the point. I have nothing but contempt for you, Lavery. You threw away everything that mattered. Your power, your criminal connections. To fawn at the feet of that scarecrow. Have you no self-respect? Obviously not, because I'm offering to work with you. And now you insult me. Listen, we both loathe each other. For very good reason. We both hate each other, but we can set our hatred aside just for now. I am capable of doing that. Are you? This is none of your concern, Prince. This is my house, and I strenuously object to anyone pointing guns at my friends and it lower your weapon, or I will shoot you. Where did you get that gun? But why are you threatening me? Well, unlike you, Faison, I'm a man of my word. You said that no harm would come to Robin's parents or, or, or any of us as long as we cooperated. 
and that's what we're doing. Yeah, right. But if you've decided to change the rules, I'm happy to respond in kind. I'm a problem with but that. That's exactly what I talked about. I mean, we stick to the Arm deep. one hair on Robin's head, and I will shoot you where you stand. Take it easy. I was just having a little chat here. You know, no reason to overreact, please. You all right? Yeah. What happened to my mother? Did you lose your patience with her as well? What's going on here? Is it mother style or what? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll stop dodging. You were the last one to see her. She went to look for you in the catacombs. Well, I believe yesterday she was talking about going into town, buying a new hat for the hey. season or whatever. Or you're lying. Don't steer crazy. You're lying. I'm not lying. And if I were you, I would be much more concerned about what's going on at the general hospital's lab than whatever trouble your mother's got herself into. He's right. The cure should be done soon. And then all of this can be over. I'll get the launch ready. Thank you. I'm going to GH now. Uh, you will stay where you took to stay. Excited about Felicia's and my wedding, but this takes on a whole new level. It's all she talked about. Yeah, well, I'm a lucky guy. She loves Sabrina just about as much as I do. And you know how excited she gets when the whole family gets together. Mm. And speaking of, have you uh, heard anything from Anne and Robert? No, not yet. No. But that's the problem with former spies, always sneaking off somewhere. Well, I hope for Emma's sake they get back in time from wherever it is they ran off to. And then he showed us a picture of Duke, tied up. Do you think they got the drop on Lavery when he went to Windermere? Yeah. Well, so he claims that Duke's being held where Robin is. Well, I didn't see any sign of him last night, but the place is the size of a theme park with a complete underground labyrinth. Yeah, many places to conceal a prisoner or a hostage, if you prefer. I don't. My point is you can't just knock on the door and inquire about Lavery, which means I'm still in charge. Yes, look at you. I'm terrified. It's amazing what you can accomplish with a little foresight. Don't you agree, Mr. Vane? Faison has orders to shoot Duke if he doesn't hear from him every day. Yes, I made a call yesterday as a gesture of good faith, but I'm not making any more calls until I get the cure. If I don't contact Faison within an hour, Lavery's a dead man. One hour. I'd say that's more than enough time to rescue Duke and Robin. Get your hands off me! Is I not clear, or do I need to prove to you how happy I would be to shoot you? Easy. Robin has been coming and going far too much for my liking, and besides, I can't risk anyone recognizing her before this day is over. What do you expect me to do? The cure is at the GH lab. Somebody has to go and get it. I agree. Brita, you go. Me? Yeah. I don't trust Robin. You are a doctor. You can easily make your way into that lab. I don't want to go unless I, I know my mother is okay. And I'll just go get the cure and come right back. I'll, I'll find your mother, all right? You sure? Yeah. The sooner you get back, the sooner you'll be out of your father's life for good. Go ahead. All right, follow me. Where do you think you're going? Into the catacombs to look for Obrecht. Unless you have a reason why we shouldn't. Oh, you, you, you waste your time as you like, Prince, but Robin stays right here. After that display, no chance in hell, sorry. Nicholas, it's okay. Fizan can threaten me all he wants, but he's not gonna hurt me. That's a chance I'd not like to take. It's fine. Brick can go get the cure, but I'm the only one who knows if it's generated properly. And I am the only one that can administer it to Jerry without killing him. Faison needs me. Robin, I really don't like the idea of you staying up here. Nicholas, you told Brit you go look for her mother, and I know how OCD you are about keeping your word, so... Are you sure? I'm positive. You've always been too brave for your own good, Robin. Even as a little girl. And you were always too cocky. Because even if Jerry does get his cure, my mother and my father will come and get you. And they will make you pay. You and Britt's mother. Oh, it's useless. This is a waste of time. Well, unless you have any better suggestions, 
Short of a miracle, this is the only chance we're going to get to get out of here. You are too eager to secure my cooperation. How do I know you don't plan to double-cross me? Oh my God, it's got to be exhausting being you. You spend your whole life doing the bidding of some maniac, or else you're, you're like conjuring up evil plots, or else now bouts of delusion and paranoia. Did it ever cross your mind just because you are a poisonous viper? Not everybody is. All oh, the insipid fools I could have been tied up next to. Why you? Shut up! I'll concentrate on getting us out of here. Oh no. Cesar's returning. Duke? What's the plan? The plan is that you stay here. Wait a minute. You're mounting an assault against Windermere and I don't get to come? You have to stay here and watch Jerry make sure he doesn't get away. Well, feel free to join your companions, Spencer. I mean, you, they need your expertise. Oh, oh shut up! up! I, I mean that sincerely. I mean, you made short work of my guards on the island and that was when you had polonium in your system. It was really quite impressive you were able to do so much. I mean, having your organs <laughs> shut down hurts like a son of a bitch. Don't tell us that you are asking for sympathy. Well, a little compassion, maybe. I guess that's not part of the WSB handbook. <laughs> Let's handcuff him to the bed. He's too weak to go anywhere. You two need oh. backup. Ah, Luke, let us handle Faison. I mean, this is our daughter. This guy's had her for over two years. Robert, Faison was doing Helena's dirty work when he kidnapped Lucky and brainwashed him. So don't tell me that you're the only two who have unfinished business with this son of a bitch. Those defeats you mentioned are rather call it minor setbacks. And still... You pursue my mother, try to get rid of my father. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, hoping to get a different result? If you think I'm so uneffectful, how come you still fear me? I stare clear of you like a rabbit dog. I'm not afraid of you. And who's cocky now? Unworthy of Anna's daughter. I pity you. You what? I pity you. You're not even original. You're, you're a, a textbook sociopath. I mean, your only purpose in life is scaring people and trying to win over my mother. So what happens when all of this is over, huh? Be careful. When you don't have any more power and Be any careful. more resources, and you certainly won't have my mother, you'll be alone. How pathetic. That's enough. Get out. I'm gonna put you somewhere where you less one of you. Get out! Get out! You know, I'd be lying if I said that you and I started off on the right foot. No, <laughs> well, that is true. We, we, we did not. But you know what? You proved yourself to me time and time again. You became Robin's family, which made you part of mine. And yeah, there were times where I wanted to strangle you for hurting her, but... Uh, more often than not, Patrick, I was grateful to you. Wow, grateful. It's every parent's hope that their child finds someone who loves them, someone who puts them first. You did that for Robin. Look, she was hurt, you know. She was hurt very much at a very young age, and... Well... I was afraid that she wouldn't be able to give her heart again. And truthfully, I was actually more afraid when I realized she'd given her heart to you. <laughs> but you made her happy. You did. Robin was like a daughter to me. When you became a son. So, just because you're starting a new family, doesn't mean you're leaving mine. Hey, I'm sorry, my friend. You're stuck with me. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Look at the church, but don't worry, once you put that monkey suit on, everything will be smooth sailing from there. Easy for you to say, you're already safely married. And that's the thing to focus on. You see, you can get caught up in the arrangements and the guests and the party and the dress you're not supposed to see her in, right. but it means the world that you think she's beautiful, but all that will fade. What matters is saying the words, making that commitment to share your life with someone you love. I can do that. And don't forget the ring. Already gave him to Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. Uh, you haven't heard from Duke yet, have you? No, not yet. He'll turn up sooner or later. 
long have you been down here? I don't know. I lost track of this. Why you both out of here? Both of us? Britt happens to be worried about you. Britta? Really? Your daughter has more consideration for you than you've ever had for her. Left to my own devices, I'd let you rot down here. I wouldn't even bother searching for you. Nicholas! Creature is stirring. It's not even a Danish rat or a Teutonic weasel. So, where is everyone? <clears throat> so much for your knight in shining armor. Say that, please. This was just a mistake. Say that, Make please. it all right. Say that, please. Shut up! Shut up! You were only worth your loyalty, and now you're worth nothing. There are at least 20 rooms on the second floor alone, plus underground passages that run all over this bloody island. Right. Did that picture give you any idea where Lavery was being held? No, it was just dark and gloomy. Oh, that narrows it down. Right. We should split up. Can you take the upstairs? Hmm. Luke, you know the grounds, right? Where are you going? Down the rabbit hole. You're free? Oh, the prince works faster than his I gave him credit for. Untie me! What are you doing? Untie me! I'm afraid I can't do that, Mr. Lavery. for you, a full clip with your name on it. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Hello, Spencer. Oh, come on, Lisa. We're on the same side this time. If I let you go, you'll turn me over to the WSB. Oh. I won't let myself be taken prisoner. No, no, that's just gonna be, that'll be a minor setback. I'm sure they'll offer you a very sweet deal in exchange for testimony against Faison. I mean, he's the one they all want. They, they, they don't want you. Our alliance is over, Livery. I'm sorry it had to be this way. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> 